You see, no matter what you are doing, until, you, until we put what you are doing beside the marking scheme, we don't know whether you are successful or not. So this is why at the, at the um, advertising stage of this program, I mentioned the fact that many men just feel if I provide money, everything is fine. And I've seen too many homes where there's money being provided, but the home still crashes. Because the man doesn't understand that a woman's major need is security, not just money. In fact, the reason why she would even like money is because of the security that money what provides. Is somebody getting this? So you can't just throw money. That is not, just because you provide money doesn't yet make you a man. And this is all we have been taught as, as kids. That once you just, all the man needs to do is to provide money and everything is fine. A woman's major need is security. And you need to put everything you are doing beside that marking scheme. That's how you know whether you are successful or not. So all the seven things we are going to mention are tied to this. Well, another thing you need to note is that as a man, hope you realize that you were created to be a superhero. In fact, that is why when you were young, if you notice, when you were young, you particularly like superheroes. Most guys. Am I correct? Most guys like superheroes. Oh, we like Captain America. We like, um, who else? Superman. Who else? Voltron, defender of the universe. My son, I have a three-year-old son, amazing guy. <laughs> he loves Hulk. He loves Hulk. Sometimes he just shouts like he's Hulk. I wish he could see how small he is. But in his mind, he's not seeing that. He's totally fascinated by superheroes. Totally fascinated. And you know, some people think, oh, it's culture and social life that teach men to be like that. No, you were created that way. That boy is three years old. He has not seen any social life teaching him to be a superhero. But he's totally attracted to superheroes. He doesn't like when he sees, he has two elder sisters. He doesn't like when they watch all their, you know, female um, kind of programming. He doesn't like it. He likes anything that has to do with superheroes. Somebody fighting, somebody defending. You know why it resonates with him and why it resonates with you? You were created to be a superhero. That's in your makeup. It's in your DNA. As you go on some time, life throws you away. That's what happens. Life distracts you and paints other pictures to you. Or as you grow up and find out you can't really fulfill that inborn desire, you begin to look for other ways to express it. But originally, you were created to function as a superhero. You are meant to actually be a proud defender of your family. You are a hero. That's how you were created. In fact, when you see the way where the Bible says that husbands um, um, love your wives and give yourself up for it the way Christ gave himself for the church. What are they saying there? They're just telling you that you are a superhero. And that's what superheroes do. They give themselves for the rest of people. Am I correct? That's exactly what superheroes do. So, all these, all these stories in the Bible that we really magnify and we appreciate are superhero stories. Abraham was a superhero. David was a superhero. How did David become a superhero? Everybody was running from Goliath. I mean, that's just a cartoon right there. Am I correct? That's a cartoon story right there. Um, um, everybody was running from a guy called Goliath. Goliath is a villain. Am I correct? He's the bad guy. My son will say, it's Thanos. That you cannot fight Thanos. He knows every, he knows. <laughs> Three years old, he's totally fascinated by those guys. So, Goliath is Thanos, threatening everybody. The whole army is running. Then David, a small boy, comes with his catapult and kills Thanos. Oh, sorry, Goliath. And they praise him. Simple superhero story. That's what the Bible is made up of. Jesus was a superhero. The whole world was going to hell. They say, who will rescue us? Who will go to hell so that all of us won't go to hell? Jesus nominated himself and went to hell, and today he is our superhero. The whole world appreciates what he has done. Did somebody get what I'm saying? Every man is created that way to be a superhero. So they compared that in marriage. They said, husbands, give yourself for your wife exactly the same way Christ gave himself for the church. Superhero. You are a superhero, guys. Or you are meant to be superheroes. It's inside of you. I know sometimes life has distracted you and seeing other men do it anyhow, 
you know, live anyhow, has distracted many men. But I'm trying to bring you back to the original mind of your creator. Hmm. I'm trying to bring you back to the original mind of your creator. By design, you were meant to be a superhero. That's how God designed you from beginning. Okay, so let's go into, into some of the seven things. Let me start from number one. Seven things every man should provide. Even if you're not married, this same thing applies to you. You can start working. You have an edge now. You can start working on it ahead. If you're already married, it's not too late to start to line up. But trust me, these seven things will make you function as a superhero. These seven things will make your children and your wife proud of you. And trust me, that's where you want to get to. You want to get to where your wife would love you, not because she has to love you, but she will love and admire you because you are lovable and admirable. Is somebody getting this? And no amount of money you have or bring will take the place of the genuine admiration of your wife. I know many men, you know, once they can't find that admiration at home, they begin to find it from other girls on the street. But you need to know that those girls that are admiring you on the street are not really admiring you genuinely because they don't know you well. If they live with you, you'll be shocked. Or they are just following you because you are giving them something. The person you really need to be proud of you is that woman that lives with you, that sees you in your weakness and admires you. That's where you must get to. That's where you must get to. If you don't get there, it's like you've kind of failed yourself in being going the full length of who you are meant to be. So number one, Number one, I hope you're writing. The first thing a man should provide is spiritual oversight. Only one has to do with money. The other six, you don't need money to do it. Spiritual oversight. You were created by God to lead. That's why God said you are the man. It means leadership falls on you automatically. <laughs> I know most men use it to bully people, but that's not the concept. I will explain that in the next point, probably. When they say the man is the head, it means you, you are meant to lead. Leadership is not the same as rulership. A leader inspires, a ruler enforces. So they are kind of different. A leader builds, a, 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 a ruler bullies. So in, in a country like our country, we've never really had any leader. We've just had rulers. And unfortunately for us, most people that are still coming back to rule are people that have had military background. What this means is that in military, you don't lead. You, you, you tell the guy what to do. That's it. So we've never really enjoyed any leadership, really. Largely, we've not. We've just had rulers. So leadership falls on you by force, and leadership starts from spiritual oversight. The first man, one of the strongest things about the first man was that he had a relationship with God. One of the strongest things about Adam was that he had a relationship with God. God gave him some clear directions on how to run the garden, how to live. Spiritual oversight. Unfortunately, for most men... You will hear things like, ah, you know, we need to marry a woman that can pray. That's really sad. That was never the design. Even though you should marry a woman that can pray, but you should also be a man that can pray. Because you're actually still supposed to lead that home spiritually. That home is supposed to draw inspiration from you spiritually. And it's not too late. Even if you are the most carnal person here today, all you need to do is to set your heart to start to pursue God on a deeper level. That is all. Spiritual oversight. There's a statistics um, that we, we saw somewhere, and I liked it, and, and I think we should look at it. DJ, do you have that picture? Uh, they were saying that when a child gets saved first in a house, 
Yes, look at it. I like it so much. <laughs> it's a picture we saw, and I liked it. It says, when a, um, when, when, um, when a child gets saved first, um, fa- okay, when family gets saved, if the, I mean, okay, they were showing the percentage, they said 3.3%, about 3.3% of the family gets saved if the child gets saved first. Just about 3.3%. If the child maybe goes to children's church, goes to a camp or something, gets saved first, it only impacts the whole family spiritually just by 3%. Said so if, 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 if it's a wife that gets saved first, it impacts the family just by 17%. Now see the men's one. He said, if the man gets saved first, it impacts the family by what? 93%. Now, in case your whole family is saved, we can use the statistics to mean spiritual growth. So when the child is the one that is the strongest in the house spiritually, it affects the family 3%. When the wife is the one that is strongest in the home spiritually, it affects that home just 70%. When the men are the strongest in the family spiritually, it affects the home 93%. And this world will be a better place, I can guarantee you. If a lot of men take the spiritual oversight in their homes. I saw this firsthand. My eldest brother got saved. At the time, you know, we were all adults, so so I couldn't call him a child. But he was the firstborn, so he he had almost a father figure status in the house. And he was a military guy. He got saved, and today, through him, all of us, Literally are saved. So I've seen this firsthand. And what's the impact? Before I got saved, I was going to kill myself. Bad boy going to die. Indian hemp smoking, pistol carrying, prostitute patronizing, you know, cults involved. Any bad thing you want to think about, Indian hemp smoking, I was ready to kill myself. So when the man take the lead spiritually, it affect, because, see, you don't understand how, how spiritual things work. And it's the same way natural things work. See, in any organization, if the boss is interested in an aspect of that business, that part of the business is interested in flourishes. Somebody get what I'm saying? It's different from when a junior officer says we should go into something. He's not going to be able to move people to do it because the, he's not from the boss. Somebody gets what I'm saying? So if you're here and your wife is the strongest in that home spiritually, it's going to limit how that home is going to go no matter what. Things will never move as fast until you are the one taking the lead. Because there's hierarchy in the realm of the spirit. The same way there's hierarchy in the natural. Spiritual oversight. You have to begin to pursue God. And you see the technical thing about men and God, you see, um, women are more externally motivated. Men are more internally motivated. So I teach women that all the time. They need to understand how men are. And if you're a man, you need to understand how you are. If our next month's series is titled University, we're teaching about the study of you as human beings. Because we study science, we study medicine, we study geography. We don't study ourselves. We are the greatest things on this earth. So you must first study, you must get a degree on you. Or else you will make a failure of your life. Women are more externally motivated. So, generally in church or spiritual things, women like to come to church because they get externally motivated. Men are internally motivated, meaning that there's no amount of talk you can talk to a man. If he's not ready to do something, he won't do it. He must decide from within. So, my challenge to you man to man today is make make up your mind to pursue God. It's a decision you can make today and it will change everything you will start to grow to the point where you will take the lead in your house, spiritually. Yes, you will become more committed in church, become more interested in spiritual things, join a Bible group, join a prayer group, join uh, where other men like you are learning about God and keep improving. That's just how you do it. It's it's simple. But you can start being that, even if you are the most, um, you know, unchristian man here today. Spiritual oversight, boom, will move things forward. It will help the whole family. Especially when you start having children. It's important. See, children are amazing. I don't even understand how they function. Children are already eating from you before they start understanding what you can say. They are drawing from you. If there is no love in a a family, the children are already affected. 
Even though you're not quarreling in their presence, you're not beating each other in their presence, just because you're not loving your wife, those kids' life are already affected. Because the best environment for a child to grow up is an environment where there's love. So if you are, a, if you are weak spiritually, you can't inspire your kids too to grow. There's something that flows from you to your children. The umbilical cord that women has, men also have, that flows to their kids is, is spiritually. Providing spiritual oversight. So, you, you, you start to also pursue the things of God, grow, um, let, 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 I, mean, I, mean, I mean, start to pray, start to pursue God. You know why you need spirit, you to grow spiritually? Your, 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 your real self is more mirrored when you know God. It's mirrored from God. Most men are trying to mirror themselves from other men. You are looking at other men to find who you are. And some of those men too are just trying to find who they are. The best person to show you who you are meant to be and who you can be is God. So nothing can ever take the place of a living relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing. Most men waste most of their time of their youth doing all kinds of things. And when they get old, they are trying to find their bearing. No, 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 no. You can actually become close to God now. Let him start showing you what you can do with your life. There is a plan for your life. I wouldn't be here today if I did not know God. He will give you direction like nothing else will. There are so many aspects of your life that you can't know. Except you have a relationship with God. That's the first thing you must provide. Women everywhere admire people that are spiritually strong. I can tell you that for free. Women are heavily attracted to people that are spiritual. And you, are the, you should be the only man in her life. She gets security. Remember her major need is security. She gets security when she knows that you actually know God and fear God. It gives her security. That she's dealing with a man that has the fear of God. That's why if you ask any woman, what are the qualities you want in a man? What's the first thing they say? God fearing! Is it because the, all the women just like God? That's not the point. The point is that if you are God fearing, they can trust you. Somebody get what I'm saying? I told you all women's need are tied to security. Last, last. It comes by security. It's not because all women love God like that crazily, which most yes, some of them do, but even the, even, even the prostitute. If you ask her now, what are the qualities you want in a man? Prostitute though. That is true. I'm, I'm going to work. What are the qualities? God fearing. <laughs> they can't be too sinners in this house. <laughs> she still wants a God fearing man. Very simple, because if you are God-fearing, she can trust you. Security. All women are attracted to God-fearing men. I remember you want to be a superhero in that house. You want to be, you, you, you want your wife to actually admire you. Trust me, you have not seen a blessing like when your wife actually really loves you. Like I told you, life, your wife and your life, they are like the same. If you treat life well, when life wants to pour out blessing on you, you'll be amazed. Everything will be working for you. And the same thing with your wife. When your wife wants to bless you, when she blesses you, the Bible said there will be favor upon your life. Many of you are not maximizing marriage at all. Because you are busy fighting your wife instead of her being on your team and fighting life with you. All women are attracted to men that fear God. Do you know what God said about Abraham? Like I told you, your best, your best mirror, the best, best blessing to mirror off is God and not other men. Do you know what God said about Abraham? You see, from, people's, from what people compliment about you, you can tell what they like about you. Abi, am I correct? Sure. When God was going to talk about Abraham, he said, um, my, my friend Abraham, he said, I, I trust my friend Abraham. He will teach his children commandments of the Lord. So that was something God was proud about, about Abraham. That Abraham was such a godly person that he would teach his kids like that. It's something that was touching God's heart. It made God proud. I mean, God was going to brag about Abraham. And one of the things he bragged about was that Abraham loved God. Same thing with David. God said, I found a man after my own heart. You need to pursue God. You can't be the kind of person that they still drag to church. 
and I'm not just talking about church attendance, a real living relationship with God. A real one that you study the Bible for yourself. You actually hear God. Listen, guys. <laughs> one, of the, one of the greatest days of your life will be the day you tell your wife God told you something. She will be so happy. She will be so proud that she's married to a man that hears God. Not a man that she's the one dragging you. The day you can say, oh, this is what God is saying we should do as a family. Trust me. That day... She will see you like a billion dollars. Then you can say that. Or that this is what God is saying. Or that I was trying to do this thing, but God said we should do it. I mean, she will be amazed that you actually have a relationship with God. Trust me. If you want to be the superhero that you are meant to be, if you want your wife and your children to admire you one day, let it be that you know God. For those of you that come to church regularly, I showed you how all Abraham's children, all descendants of Abraham, are all still enjoying blessings because of Abraham's work. Will your children enjoy such things because of your own work with God? All women are attracted to spiritual men. So the first thing you should provide is spiritual oversight. Don't mirror with other men. You know what? When you mirror with other men, you know where you end up. I can tell you where you end up. is drinking. It's, be, it's because you don't, you, you're not mirroring yourself with God. You're mirroring yourself with other men. Other men, last last, is to gather in a bar and drink. That's where you end up. It's to have sex. Especially outside marriage. Because that's what men brag about. That's what most men, you know, think they are cool. How many girls have you slept with? How many babes do you have? When you are not mirroring yourself with God, you mirror yourself with other men, these are the things that you will have. Drinking, having multiple sex partners, bullying your wife or bullying women. You know, they pretend themselves, ah, your wife is still controlling you. These are the things you will discuss. This, this, this is where you end up. <laughs> this is where you end up. It's just a trap to kill the real potential. Or, if you are marrying with men, last line is to be about money. How much money you are making. And you don't realize that money in itself doesn't satisfy. It doesn't. If somebody gets what I'm saying? It doesn't. When we do the university, we will look at some of those facts. I don't want to go into that today. But if you are marrying yourself with men, these are the things. Drinking, sex, bullying women, just making money. Some men, that's all their life is about. Just money, 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 money. You know, and let me tell you the origin of this, our men chasing money. Let me just tell you. It's because they have been given the impression that you must provide. And it's money they think that you must provide. So everybody chasing money. We have chased the money so much, we've forgotten the reason why we even started chasing the money. So most, most men are on auto. Even the richest men in the world are still chasing more money. They don't if you ask them why. They don't know why. Why do you want more? To invest it. When you invest and the money comes, what will you do? <laughs> People like Bill Gates got that on time. I knew that I can't be, this is not what I'm here to do. I can do other things with my life. There's a, there's a level where money doesn't make difference again. Let me give you an example. If I have 10,000 naira, you have zero naira. At that time, there's a lot of difference. If I have 100,000 naira and you have 90,000 naira, the difference has reduced. If you have 5 billion and 10,000, and I have 5 billion alone, at that time, that 10,000 has no difference. Let me even say, if you have 5 billion, I have 3 billion. At that stage, there's, really, there's not much you can do that I can't do. There's not much. And the trick you don't know is that the person that has five billion that is still working, what is he working for? To make more money. What are you going to do with it? He has gotten so used to the making money, he has even now lost the reason why they're making the money. He's just on auto. Don't wait for that stage. Of course, money is important, I know that, but there's more to your life. Number two. If I move to, to number two, a quick, some quick tips about what you can do to, to get spiritual oversight. Um, 
start being more interested in spiritual things. Remember, because you're a man, you are more internally motivated. So we can't force you, we can't push you. Some of you, I know your wife forced you to come for this thing. So from but from today, be the person that actually leads. Be the person that wants to be in church for both Sunday service and midweek service. Be the person that wants to get some Christian friends around you that, that will inspire and motivate your spiritual growth. Don't be caught in this money chase. It's all men do. It's all men just want to do. Just be chasing money. It's a trap that somebody has put us into. And we think that's just all that matters. I'm not saying you, not, you need money. You know that you need money. But don't, don't let that be your whole life. Start to have some basic prayer patterns. You know, spend time in prayer for yourself. There's nothing as powerful as you spending time to pray. Trust me, in that home, you have the highest spiritual authority because you are the one God ordained as the head of that home. So there are some things that will never happen until you are the one that goes to seek for it. In, in, in a hierarchy, there are, some sign- there are some things they don't release until the August signs. Am I correct? If a junior person signs, they will not release it. So you are the head. There are some things you should go before God and get. If you don't go, it will come. No matter how much your wife fast and pray, you are the authorized head of that home. So you need to approach God. You need to know a bit about God. So become more interested. Start reading Christian books. So even if you can't read big one, read small one. If you can't like, read it at all, buy messages. Buy audios. They're on YouTube. You can buy audio if you want. Listen and watch and whatever however else you want to learn. Create time for your spiritual development. Attend church. Attend men's group. Attend other groups where they share the Bible. Prayer meetings. That, that's how you grow. Nobody becomes a spiritual giant overnight. We all joined the lab. We all watch other men pray and try to learn how to pray. That's how we did it. Nobody was born being great at anything. Somebody gets what I'm saying. Your wife will be proud of you. Your kids will be proud of you. If you provide spiritual oversight. Okay? So make a decision today. Let it, let it, let it show so much that your wife we, we, we mention it, that she has seen that you, you, you are pursuing God. Women are so attracted to men that love God. That's, that's how it works.